Well, let's bring in our political strategist now to talk about Mr. Bernier's run. Susan Smith is principal at Blue Sky Strategy Group, Kate Harrison, vice chair of SUMA Strategies, and James Valky, director of research and strategy at Viewpoints Research. Hello to the three of you. Hi, Michael. Hello. Susan, I'll get you to start us out here. Uh, do you think Mr. Bernier has a chance of taking the riding of Portage Lisgar? And if he does, what would that mean for politics in Ottawa? Well, it'll be a very interesting and I think fairly bloody uh, contest in Portage La Prairie, a conservative safe seat uh, held by Candace Bergen before. And Mr. Mr. Bernier tilts right. And for the conservatives to beat him and hold on to the vote, they're going to have to tilt right. So if he comes in, regardless, whoever wins that race will have appealed to that part of the party. And that brings that further right wing social conservative voice to Ottawa. The conservative candidates an anti vaxxer the, for the nomination ran against the and lost against the or ran and won, sorry, against the Manitoba health minister. So it's going to be a very right wing race. It'll be a question of who out right wings the other. Mr. Polyev's team will have to show the people who might vote Max Bernier that they can do that while at the same time trying to re reassure the rest of kind of middle of the road Canadians that they're not tilting too far right. But I, I feel a crick in my neck tilting in the right direction at this moment watching this race. Oh, well, uh, Kate, uh, to, to you know, give Susan's neck a break here. Uh, if Maxim Bernier does get elected, talk to us about the type of challenge that represents for Conservatives, because it's not just uh, Maxim Bernier, but there's also other groups within the Conservative uh, family that, that wants to challenge right now. Since Maxim Bernier would get more exposure if he's in the House, does that whittle away at the party's base? I, it's a big if, uh, and it is a hypothetical. I uh, I have a, a different perspective than Susan on the the likelihood of of Max and Bernier's return to the House. Uh, keep in mind, uh, he didn't even win the riding for which he was an MP when he ran as PPC leader um, a, a couple of elections ago. Yes, the PPC has done uh, well in Portage Lisker. I think last time they got about 20% of the vote, which is very high compared to other ridings. The Conservative candidate, though, in Candace Bergen still won by a 30 point margin. So I think we're, it, it is a big hypothetical. For sure, there's a tension. There always has been within the conservative movement around the right and more of the center. Um, and I think that, you know, for, for the conservatives, they kind of have to um, stick to uh, what is authentic and true about the, the leader and his current policies, which is that that small P populism. Um, you know, we've, we've tried a couple Goldilocks approaches along the way of, of being quite right and uh, more to the center under Aaron O'Toole. Now this is something different and conservatives will have to decide and see if it's successful once the next election concludes. Yeah, not an easy task, though, for, for Mr. Polyev, I, I, I would imagine, though, if they're going after the same voter base. Yeah, indeed. But I also think that, you know, Max and Bernie's message is really concentrated around uh, COVID pandemic restrictions. He hasn't been as vocal on some of the issues that Canadians are talking about. I don't think that he has really a clear message around cost of living, for example, the housing crisis. Certainly he's vocal on immigration. It's a position that's different than most uh, conservatives that you talk to in Ottawa and one that seems to be different than what Polyev has put forward. So I think that Bernier's candidacy is really focused on that disgruntled group of um, you know, people that were against COVID restrictions. It's difficult to fight an election in 2023 when most of those restrictions were lifted in 2021. So I, I don't see Bernier's support translating into kind of a, a modern movement on the on the right of center. Uh, James, what, what do you think? What kind of impact could Maxime Bernier uh, actually have if he wins this uh, riding? If he wins the riding, it'll have a big impact. I mean, he will, he is the candidate who doesn't, seem to go away for the Conservatives. He is a thorn in their side and he just keeps coming back. Um, I think with the by-election, he is basically removing all the other challenges of other candidates that he had in the federal and he is increasing his profile once again. Um, I think Fred Delory, he, he wrote a piece on this and said this is a referendum on the Canada conservatism, uh, really raising the stakes about what the outcome of this by-election might mean. Um, however, I think that, you know, what we really have here is a bit of a conservative narrative problem. Are they anti-vax populist or are they establishment 
pro Volkswagen investment government in waiting. And if you talk about the Volkswagen investment, you've also got the Oxford by-election coming up. And that was rife with uh, nomination problems, too. Um, I think right now it throws a wrench into the Conservatives' narrative. Um, and I suspect there's uh, behind the veneer of Pierre's wonderful smile, there's some white knuckles in the party. Okay. Well, of course, we're going to follow that by-election quite closely, whatever it's called. But I also want to talk uh, about passports while I have the three of you, because as you know, uh, new changes were announced yesterday, the government focusing on the security aspects of this change, but uh, some Conservatives taking issue with a redesign that removes images of Vimy Ridge and Terry Fox, just to name a couple. Uh, Take a listen to this exchange that happened in the House today. He deletes. Terry Fox, the soldiers that died at Vimy, the city of Quebec, the RCMP from our passport to replace it with a coloring book that includes an image of him swimming at Harrington Lake when he was a boy. I announce that a common sense conservative government will bring back Vimy, bring back our memory of Terry Fox, bring back pride in our country and restore a passport that all of us can be proud of. It breaks my heart to hear anyone in this house politicize a Canadian hero like Terry Fox. That is something that the Fox family has prided itself on since Terry passed away in 1980. Not only that, during the convoy, Terry's statue was defaced here in Ottawa and the members opposite were supportive of that convoy. Okay, Susan, uh, that exchange aside, have Liberals opened opened themselves up to criticism here for for essentially not celebrating our past? No, 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 no. The passport we've had was designed in 20... No. (laughs) I think Tempest in a teapot. I was trying to think of some nice, fancy alliteration for passport in your pocket and a a fuss with a PH, maybe. Um, Look... Our passport is the most most secure travel document we have in the world. It guarantees our identity and our way both in and out into other countries and back home into our own. The current design was done in 2013. The new design uh, has been a process that's underway and it's about security. It's about making sure we have a document that can't be counterfeited, that can't be copied, where people's identities can't be stolen and the people who aren't supposed to be in Canada, don't get into Canada with Canadian documentation. That's what this is about. I'm a bit baffled uh, by Mr. Polyev's attacks on this. I I, I, I don't find it actually that mature, that statesmanlike. And it seems like not a kitchen table issue for Canadians. We need the most secure documents in the world. We need our ID lasered in. That's what this is about. Uh, passports have refreshes over years. This is the current version, and he should just, um, I don't know, maybe use it to travel across the country and visit some other places in the world and get some perspective about issues that are really important. Well, well, you know, Ken, I'll bring you in here because, you know, I, I take what you're saying, Susan, but I have to say, listening to some public radio, I go on the Internet and listen to public radio oftentimes <clears> from across the country, and there are Canadians that are very uh, upset that they have removed images of Vimy Ridge and, and, and Terry Fox. So, so Kate, what do you make a, a, of this issue? Yeah, I, I think if you are uh, a traditionalist uh, and a conservative who takes a lot of, of pride in um, national history, you're, you're probably looking at this document and not understanding um, why some of those things would be removed. And I, I mean, I would I agree with Susan that there are bigger fish to fry Uh, I think one of those fish are actually getting your passport on time. Um, And I think that having this whole redesign distraction, uh, when just last week the government came out and said, you know, we know that the PSAC strike is over, but expect your passport uh, processing to still be delayed. Uh, To me, that's that's an example of the government focusing more on virtue signaling with things like this, uh, as opposed to actual um, service delivery for Canadians. And it's not just this, Michael, it's things like removing religious symbols from the coat of arms, uh, the whole debate that happened around changing the words in the national anthem. So again, if you're a traditionalist and a conservative, you're looking at these things collectively and wondering why on earth this is the Trudeau government's priority right now. So James, uh, Michael, hang on sorry, a second though, but this, just quickly, Michael, this process was started in 2019 uh it, it kate sort of makes it sound like oh they just decided to bring this up and launch this now that's not in fact the case these are things they that take a lot of time to do from a security perspective 
deferred. They could have deferred the rollout until such time as more people were getting their passports on time. Well, I think, that, but they've also launched as part of this, they've also launched a new online application process, actually. So it does dovetail with people being able to more, uh, more conveniently get their passports. Look, I think the conservatives Mike. are making a whole lot of noise out of nothing. Okay, go ahead, James. I know you're trying to Michael, get in there. This, this, this is a rookie level mistake in year eight of an incumbent government. This should have been a slam dunk. Increased security for Canadians. Everyone safer. Headline over end the day move on um but instead uh they were caught flat-footed on something that should have been easily revealed during testing and what that tells me is that the the rigors that they've been holding in government are are, are shaking a little like the car is going down the highway but it's shaking a little bit and whoever is holding onto the wheel better get it in control real quick so is this a big issue i mean of the top 100 issues canadians are facing this wouldn't probably wouldn't make it but it's issued like this this week and another little thing next week and another little thing next week that adds to that narrative that that things are kind of not being managed correctly and I think that they need to quash that soon. So you see this as essentially an unforced error on, be, on the part of the government? It's an own goal. Absolutely it is. They should have known this. They should have been prepared for it. And the fact that they were not shows that this, they, they, they didn't have the processes in place to, to launch it the way they wanted to. Like it's, I do focus groups. You show creative all the time and you test against old things and someone would have brought it up. Why are we getting rid of this? And that's a question you should have had prepared. And it seemed like they weren't quite ready for that. Okay. Uh, I think a focus group. If you stop, if you sorry, stop sorry, anybody sorry, on sorry. The one at a time, Susan. Very quickly, qu very quickly. One at a time. If you stop Susan. anybody before the street yesterday and ask them were their pictures in their passport, I'm not sure they would have said yes. Let alone being able to identify what was in them. People pull out their passports when they're using them. Otherwise, they sit in a safe spot in their safety deposit box or their drawer or their cupboard for wherever they can reach it when they travel. Uh, Kate, last word to you. It was an own goal that also lines the coffers of their main opposition's pockets. And I think that's the other part of this. There's been so many things in recent months that the Liberals have served up on a silver platter for Conservatives, motivated ones who care about issues like this, to then turn around and donate to Polyev. I'm not sure how tactically that makes any sense for them, uh, for something to Susan's point that so few people care about to begin with. Okay, well, we'll leave it at that. Uh, thank you for the discussion today. Uh, Susan, Kate, James, take care. Uh, safeguard that passport in your sock drawer. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. <laughs> take care. Bye-bye, guys.